2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. We'll get to Hebrews here in just a minute. It says this, For all the promises of God in Him are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us, Paul says. The promises are yea and amen. What God has to say about anything and every time and all the time, it's a truth, it's a promise. It will happen one way or the other with somebody. What's so marvelous is there are a lot of things, a lot of promise that, is in, that includes anybody who wants to, whosoever will, all the blessings, so forth and so on. A lot of his promises has to do with anybody can enjoy and have the blessed inheritance that God promises to the believer. All the promises of God are yea and amen. Chapter 11 of uh, Hebrews, of course, it's the faith chapter. The first verse is very powerful, very necessary to know and understand and embrace. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now I'm going to just briefly touch on several verses here until we get down to where I want to go. Uh, the second verse says, For by it, speaking of faith, the elders obtained a good report. There's not going to be any other way we're going to obtain any kind of a good report acceptable other than by faith. We can do a lot of right things, a lot of good things, but unless we engage faith in it, in other words, acknowledging God, acknowledging His Word, trusting and believing in Him and who has provided the truth, who has provided the plan, in other words, it's His business that we acknowledge that and operate in it, then it's going to be beneficial. But if we just operate like a robot, just doing the things that's right and don't do the things that's wrong only, it's going to be fruitless. They obtained a good report because of faith. Through faith, verse 3 says, we understand that the worlds were framed. Verse 4 says, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Uh, verse 5 says, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. He walked with God. Verse 6 is another important verse, verse that we need to know and understand and embrace. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So don't flush the concept of acknowledging him and his business and everything and what he's all about to do and behave as you're supposed to as opposed to just going through it mechanically. Engage him, acknowledge him, glorify him. The scripture tells us not to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him, include him, embrace him. <clears throat> Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah was warned and built a boat. Verse 8, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place, he should have to receive an inheritance, obeyed. Went out to a place, he didn't know where he was going to go, but he obeyed. Amen. This is all talking about certain promises. The topic is faith right now, but there's promises that's involved that's not necessarily described as we go along. It says, Abraham, when he's called to go out into the place where he should not have to receive, for an inheritance obeyed, went out not knowing whether he went. He so journeyed, in verse 9, and he looked for a city, in verse 10. Verse 11, Sarah laughed. How can this be? Had some questions, and we understand all about that kind of concept. But she finally believed and accepted the promise of the Lord, and she conceived. Now, verse 13, let's start slowing down a little bit, and notice what it says. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. At face value, that sounds sad. At face value, that seems unfair. At face value, it seems like, well, who would want to be involved in something that you try so hard and, and nothing happens? Who would want to be involved in such a concept? A bunch of them did, are, and going to. Amen. Back then, they didn't have the promise of the Messiah. They didn't have the, well, excuse me, they didn't have the reality of having a, 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 a Messiah. They didn't have the reality of having their own nation. They didn't have the reality of several things, though it was promised to them. And the scripture said, they died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. What are you talking about? Hope, believing with expectation of what God's going to perform sooner or later at some point, appointed time in the future, it will happen. And it's based on believing and having faith of what the promise has to say. They looked forward, they having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them. 
Amen. Anytime that we proclaim a promise of God and we add if. The weather's right. If I get up in time. If I feel like it. If so-and-so will or if some so-and-so won't. If we add those things trying to negotiate with the promises of God, you are foolish. Foolish. We need to believe God at His promise and leave it as it is. And tell God, Father, I believe your promise. I embrace that. I'm going forward expecting your promise to come about in your time. Amen. If you'll settle with that, there's no worry. There's no temptation to holler if, 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 if all the time. All that's all aside. You trust God and believe God and you go forward with expectation, with hope, 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 the evidence of things hoped for. Uh, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed. That's what they said. That's what they confessed. That's what they proclaimed. They have a, uh, they have a belief. They have a notion. They have a concept. They have a, something to embrace. That's what they said. That's what they talked about. They didn't include all this other stuff. Uh, what was it four times in uh, Joshua chapter 1? Only be strong and of a good courage. That's what we're supposed to do Only. Not add the other and this and well if, well so and so. You know, when you entertain those things, you're melting down and you're degenerizing and you're polluting and watering down what you said you said in the first place. Right. Amen. Uh, But, but, but you are. Now there's nothing wrong with acknowledging, yes, it's cold outside. Yes, the roads are slippery. Pastor, where are you going with this? How many people went to work under those conditions? A lot of them did. I remember when we had that 85 Dodge Caravan. It was red, and it done a good job. But it come a a storm, icy storm one time. I worked at night. Had to leave about 1020 at night, be there at 11 o'clock. I left early because the roads were not just snow, not just frozen sleet. It was actual, literal, shining ice on the road. You get out there, and you have to literally be very careful, or you'll fall down. Well, here I go. Very slow. And if you know the way from our house, the back way, we call it to Fayetteville, you go through Sulphur City and down that uh, a hill, and I went it down, down uh, slower than a snail. And got around there, past the river, and got on another place down there before you get to the, the Partain's place. Another hill. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. No slip. Nothing went out of character. Got down to the bottom of the hill. I praise the Lord and thank the Lord. But, 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 but. God will make a way of escape so that you can bear it. Hallelujah. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. <clears throat> yeah, we're on this earth. We used to be sinners, now we're saints. All these things are okay to acknowledge, but don't lean on any one thing that's going to cause you problems. Amen. I happen to be a mash burn. And I'll confess honestly, my past mash burns weren't all that bright. We're all that talented. We're all not all that great. But they served the Lord. They believed God. And various things that come along through me and through my kids, etc., are good. Because we trust God and believe God. Now that was a generic scenario. Look where you came from. Look at the influences you've had in your life just since you've been living. What are you embracing? What are you looking forward to? What do you look at? What influences you every day when you see that certain person or remember that certain uh, circumstance or situation? These people died in faith, not accepting or not having the experience of all the promises that they knew of. A Savior to come, a Savior to come. This one died, the next generation died, the next generation died. Who's going to hold on to the hope? Who's going to embrace of the thing that we say we're believing in according to God's promise? They are yea and amen. That's where we need to be today according to His promise. We don't know if we'll have tomorrow to live. Amen. We may die before we experience those certain promises. Look at all the ones that we have already experienced. Those that's come back, uh, come about before we even become a, a person on the planet. Namely, Jesus Christ and all what He has established. Uh, They were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We're here, but we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Hallelujah. For they that say such things declare plainly. Are you a Christian? Uh, Well, I go to church. You're declaring misery. Oh, yeah, it's good to go to church. 
But what are you supposed to declare? That you're born again, child of God, servant of the Most High, glad for it, looking forward to God's promises being real in your life, expecting the Lord's blessings because He's promised them, looking forward to it. Embrace that, declaring that. Don't add this other stuff. You're doing it to your own demise. Demise means death. I didn't know that until my wife corrected me some time back. You're creating your own demise. Amen. We're going to speak life or death. The scripture's true. I'm not telling you anything new. How are you? My shirt is partly blue. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. I'm looking forward to what God's blessings are in my life. I'm expecting this, this, and this reverently with, with, with fear because he said so. Amen. Now be cautious how you present that. Be cautious not to say, now God, you said, now you're supposed to, you better. Be cautious how you address his majesty. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, start off with saying, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Amen. Makes a big difference. Now, God understands our situation. He, he understands. He knows already better than we do. There's no point in promoting our misery before Him, expecting Him to fix everything. Amen. You know what? He's already fixed a whole lot. He's already fixed a whole lot. That's a different message. <clears throat> Declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful, I'm, I'm, I'm at awe that, that this comment is in here. If they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. In other words, he's saying if they want to go back to their old ways of living, go on. If you want to go back to your sludge and misery, go on. That's your choice. <clears throat> but these folks say, I'm not going to. I've been delivered. I'm embracing. I'm looking forward to. I have a promise. I'm expecting the blessing of the Lord in my life sooner or later at some point. Amen. For an eternity. Talking about the promises of God tonight. They are yea and amen. They are real. They're established. They're actually, absolutely and actually real. Amen. amen. But now, they desire a better country. Do you want something better than the United States? Yes. I appreciate very much and respect where I live. Absolutely. With all of its problems. But I'm looking for a better country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to think of a song that fit where I'm talking about, but it's not coming. <laughs> oh, well, this will work. I was going to use this later. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That fits just good enough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking for a better country. These folks were looking for a better country. If they had been mindful of the country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. Is there ever a time, or had there ever been a time, that God was ashamed uh, to say that He's the God of those people down there? I don't know whether we can say God has ever been ashamed or not, but he definitely has been frustrated and definitely been angry and has definitely has done some very punishing judgment against people who's been against him. We know that for sure. As far as being ashamed, I don't really know. He may, he may not. I don't, I don't have any scripture for that. Amen. These people hadn't received the promises, but that they believed, they embraced, they persuaded, or were persuaded of truth. They were uh, realized that they were on the earth, but they seek a heavenly country. They had no interest in the earthly ways or their old life. They were looking forward to a new and better home. Hebrews chapter 8, two verses here. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Talking about Jesus Christ, it says this. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then to no place had been sought for the second. What we have right now is better. Frankly, it's the best. What we have is better, and frankly, it's the best. 
The old was functional for its time. No one was able to fulfill it till Jesus came and fulfilled it for us. We don't have to fulfill the expectation in order to become a Christian. Jesus Christ done that for us. We accept what he's done and provided for us. Then we're expected to live a Christian life, not the former. Amen. And there's a lot of proof and substantiation of that concept. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and 1. Let us therefore fear, take serious consideration and reverence, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. We're going to come short of God's blessings and promises and benefit if we don't seriously consider what it's all about. If we don't take to heart sincerely and humbly what God has offered and what He's providing, we'll let it slip. It'll be not, we'll be non-conforming. We will come short of it. It goes on to say in verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. When we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we hear the truth of God Almighty, we need to not only believe, but to embrace it and faithfully follow what we say we're believing. Or we'll wind up like he's warning folks against. That will come short of it. Not having connection, not having a, a go ye and, and a hope for whatever it is that we think we're going to get and do. We must respect and honor and appreciate the promises of God Almighty, especially concerning salvation. If we don't do that, we don't have any hope. We don't have any place, in the, any guideline to follow, anything to have. We live and move and have our being because of His love, grace, and mercy. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the Holy Lamb of God. Let's see, one more verse. For we which have believed do enter into his rest, into the rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter to my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. God had this plan fixed and established long time ago. And it's his plan that we have life to whosoever will that will accept and believe it. Trust in it and embrace it and continue trusting God for the promise that he's given. Amen. There's plenty of things in life that we expect, and it falls apart. It don't happen. I told Dean a time before service, I said, I had to call Brother Mike and cancel him coming last Wednesday night because of the weather, but we're expecting to have him to come sometime in the near future. It was disappointing. It happens. <laughs> Yuck happens. But that doesn't mean the promise isn't real. That doesn't mean that God won't keep His promise. He will. And they're still established. They're, they're yea and amen. They're forever established. We can trust in what the Word of God says. Amen. Don't try to figure everything out about God. He'll tell you sooner or later. He'll tell you sooner or later. Believe what you do understand. Accept His counsel, His correction, His discipline, everything about it. We are His child. You think a father's going to treat his child appropriately? Yeah. Love, grace, and mercy, discipline, sometimes a little more than just discipline. Amen. Some of us on occasion need some of that extra discipline to wake us up. Hallelujah. I got some discipline growing up by my daddy that got my attention, and I ne'er done it again. Now, how that would affect us if our Heavenly Father treated us in such a manner that disciplined us fervently. Will it wake us up? Will it cause us to not do what we shouldn't have been doing in the first place ever again? I don't know. That's between us. That's left up to us to decide. Amen. Don't forget what He's done for us. Don't forget what we've done up here a while ago. Don't forget that. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm almost finished. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. That's our calling. Don't back up. 
Don't bad mouth. Don't frown. Don't question. He's called us into gl glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. The individual called a Christian who's found deliverance through the from the bondage of sin through Jesus Christ has glory and virtue in the life. They've been given virtue and glory because of the promises that God has given them, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these... What? The promises, His Word, His counsel, His understanding, His knowledge, His discipline, His do's and don'ts, and everything about His plan, He's given this so graciously that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped, remember anything about escaping? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We've escaped that, you know that. We've escaped that bondage. We've escaped that influence. We have authority over that now. In the name of Jesus, we don't have to uh, 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 be submissive to the devil's tactics. We don't have to. Before we became a Christian, we didn't have anything to fight against it other than thinking that mommy and daddy said, don't do this, so I better not, or they'll catch me, and, and you're guilty, and you hope they don't find out. That's the life we had. That's a pretty minimal way of putting it. But through Jesus Christ, we've been delivered from that shame, from that bondage, from the sin in our former life. We don't have to yield to the lust. We can do something very simple. Here it is. You've heard it this morning and several times before. If we'll submit ourselves, therefore, unto God and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. That's how to get him out of your hair. If you'll do that, too many want to entertain. Too many want to scratch their carnal itch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you'll wind up having problems. Amen. Guess who decided that? Me, myself, and I. Sometimes we're proud. Oh, we're proud in the moment, but after a little while, ooh. There's a few things in my past life I wish I could take back. I can't do that. I can't do that. I've asked God's mercy, and he's taken care of it. Healing has been performed. Amen. One more passage. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Two verses here. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. Paul says, And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. What are we supposed to be diligent about? What is it that we have that's assuring? And what is it about the hope that's of any value? Jesus Christ, by God's plan, has given us life. He has performed, Jesus has performed and fulfilled all of the Father's expectation for us. And Paul is saying here, we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end. Hold his promises dear. Embrace them. Look forward to its blessing in your life, whether it be tomorrow, next year, or a few millennium from now. Whatever it may be, embrace that. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hallelujah. There's something about an inheritance very uh, glorious. What it means is it's not just somebody giving you something and now you have it. That's cool. But an inheritance is something that somebody owns, has established and promoted and built, and it's passed on to you. Look what God Almighty has done and created, Sister Darlene, and how he has promoted and performed and blessed, and especially since Jesus has been here. And what the apostles have said about his God's plan. Look what he's given us as an inheritance. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Hang in there. Chapter 10 of Hebrews and one of the verses, I forget now which one it is. You have a need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promises. Be patient. Trust God. Have confidence in Him. Things are ongoing. His plan is being fulfilled, and we're in it. Be cautious of how many questions you ask. Be cautious of <clears throat> offering your opinion about how things are. <clears throat> proclaim, declare, as those examples in chapter 11 of Hebrews. Declare and proclaim the promises of God, who we are and what God, who God is in us. He's began a good work, and he has something that he owns. It happens to be us, and he's not negligent. And we're warned not to be negligent concerning our salvation. 
Pursue God's purpose and plan in your life. His promises are yea and amen. They're real. They're established. Embrace them. Rejoice over them. I have this promise. I have this promise. Praise God. Amen. There's a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> Anyone need prayer tonight? You have a particular need you'd like the church to pray with you about?